we'll go directly into our Kraken here. And there's more positive to look at than negative with the Kraken. So we're back up um, from last week when it was like negative, 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 negative. It was all bad. It was all evil. It was all sad. Um, going to our Kraken here, uh, three games over the course of the past week, all of them on the road and all of them in the state of California. Uh, April 1st at the San Jose Sharks, a 4-2 victory. Our player of the mat player of the game sorry i have player of the match here we're not in soccer uh forward ellie tolvenin told the two assists two points uh two plus minus and two hits on the day so able to take care of business despite the sharks hanging into this game here april 3rd at the kings a two to five loss our player of the game forward yanni gord one assist one point one plus minus and one hit seattle uh goes into the third period down by three goals getting shut out at the point in time they are able to get two goals but the kings do push ahead um and this loss here officially eliminated the kraken from postseason contention i mean we knew it was coming but this officially mathematically took seattle out of any hope of the playoffs so Tough there. I mean, tough for you to look at Brandon Tano's sad face on your screen right now, but you'll have to deal with it. Um, and then to wrap up that California road trip, April 5th at the Anaheim Ducks, a 3-1 to victory. Our player of the game forward Shane Wright. Shaner, uh, two goals, one assist, three points on the day for Shane, a one plus minus, and five shots. This was a high-paced one, a fast-paced one. Shane Wright gets, his, uh, gets two goals there. Feels good about it. Uh, Jordan Eberle records his 700th career point with an assist on one of the goals there. So congratulations to Ebbs. Shane has a great game. He looks confident. They're able to get those two goals. Uh, Seattle able to take care of a pesky Ducks team uh, and complete that road trip with a win. So you get two wins out of three games. Not bad. Hard to complain about that. We go directly into our Kraken Player of the Week, and it's been a long time since we have had a Kraken Player of the Week. I went with Shane Wright. Uh, over three games played on that road trip, uh, three goals scored, one assist, four points all over those three games played, a one plus minus and nine shots. Most importantly, I think it just really, you really saw Shane look like he's ready for the NHL level on a consistent basis, which it sounded like, uh, and not necessarily sounded like, but Ron Francis has said uh, throughout the course of this season more uh, directly around the trade deadline that the plan is for Shane Wright to be up here on a consistent basis starting next season at the NHL level. Uh, and Shane looks confident, looks good. It looks like the development plan that they had in place for Shane down in Coachella Valley uh, with the Firebirds at the NHL level has worked. Um, he will go back down to Coachella Valley uh, probably soon as a few more games here and his the first year of his entry-level contract will be burned up. Um, but, no, just uh, just exciting to see him get into it, look confident, look good, uh, and help the Kraken win a few games there. So uh, we'll go straight into it just because there's more of it. <laughs> um, as you can see here on your screen, the long, fun adventures of defenseman Kale Flurry. Uh, on April 1st, the team recalled defenseman Kale Flurry from the Firebirds on an emergency basis. The next day on the 2nd, he was reassigned to Coachella Valley and the Firebirds. <laughs> um, and then later in the week, there is a piece of other team notes we'll get to that was in between these, but because it's all Kale related, we'll get to it on the 5th. The team recalled defenseman Kale Flurry from the Firebirds on an emergency basis, but he was reassigned on the 6th. Adam Larson and Vince Dunn both missed um, a contest here. Adam Larson, there's no official ruling for why his, uh, his uh, Ironman streak was broken there. There's some thought that his, uh, his partner Vera... Uh, might be uh, close to having their child, but that's not a confirmation. That is rumor. Don't take it for stock. Um, we go over here to the other piece of team news that I mentioned on the third, uh, continuing with the last few weeks and what we've seen over the last few weeks, uh, the team signed goaltender Victor Osman to a two-year entry-level contract. Uh, the college free agent uh, out of the University of Maine was signed to a two-year, two-way contract, a 950000 AAV, set to begin next season, and he is currently expected to report to the team's AHL affiliate, the Coachella Valley Firebirds, on an amateur tryout contract for the remainder of the year. Um, in this quote from the press release from Kraken General Manager Ron Francis, Victor adds to our goaltending depth, and we look forward to working with him as he continues to develop. Osman is a six foot four, two 205 goaltender, posting a 13-win, 6-loss, 1-overtime loss record with a 2.81 goals against average and an 8.92 save percentage in 21 games this season for the University of Maine Black Bears. 
He recorded five consecutive wins from December 3rd to the 20th of 2023, helping the Black Bears defeat UConn, Union, Bentley, RIT, and Dartmouth by a combined score of 23-9. to The Netminer began the streak by making a season-high 38 saves on December 3rd against the UConn Huskies, an eventual 7-3 to main victory. Osman finished his collegiate career having posted a 35-38-7 record with a 9.05 save percentage and a 2.82 goals against average in 87 games for the Black Bears from the 2020-21 season to 2023-24. The goaltender had a career year in 2022-23, setting NCAA career bests in wins at 14, shutouts at 5, and a save percentage at 918, and goals against average at 2.21. His efforts that season earned him several accolades. He was the semifinalist for the Mike Richter Award, presented to the top NCAA men's goaltender each season. He was named to Hockey East's second all-star team, named the Hockey East Goaltender of the Month in December, uh, the Hockey East Player of the Week on January 30th, and the Hockey East Goaltender of the Week on February 27th. In addition to that on-ice performance, Osman earned Hockey East All-Academic honors in the years 22 and 23. Prior to that collegiate career that we just talked about, Osman, a native of Sweden, played one season for the Chicago Steel of the USHL, posting a 25, 25, I don't know why I said 25, 25, 4-0 record with a 9-13 save percentage and a 2.34 goals against average. He did attend uh, the team's, deve- the Kraken's development camp this past year at KCI. So, um that will wrap up our Kraken segment of the show here. We go into it. The Kraken sit at a 32 win, 31 loss, 13 overtime loss record. Good for fifth in the Pacific Division at 77 points. Uh, the Kraken have a full slate of games ahead, including their last two regular season games of the year. April 9th versus the Arizona Coyotes is a green night. A 7 o'clock start on Red Sports. April 11th, the final home game of the season and fan appreciation night is against the San Jose Sharks. That's a 7 o'clock start. That's the last home game of the year, as mentioned. Then uh, the next two games that the Kraken will play after that to begin a road trip to the end of the year. Uh, April 13th at the Dallas Stars is the first of a back-to-back. That's a 12 o'clock noon start. Uh, that's on ABC. And then April, thir- April 14th, sorry, at the St. Louis Blues is a 10 a.m. start. And that game is on TNT. And we wrap things up here.